Hey everyone, this is Gleb and today I want to add a test to my personal website, which is long overdue. Part of this site is dynamic. I have a JSON file with all my open source projects. And if I search, for example, as a mocha, you can see that I'm filtering all the projects to the ones that have mocha somewhere in the description of a name. You can say test. Now, it was the only thing that is kind of bothering me is that it's not changing the number of projects, right? Even if you, for example, uh, find just a nice projects where only a couple, it still shows all the projects. I already modified my local copy so that if I filter the projects, it changes the number of projects displayed. So why don't we add Cypress test to this local project and make sure that filtering projects works as expected. This is the HTML of a page. I'm using view version one. So this has been a while since I updated. So the project count is right here, number of filter projects. And then I'm using li v4 filtered by the search text. Okay, so how do we create or start a new project? I already have package.json, I have a build step, I have a, you know, dev local webpack running. So all I want to do right now is add Cypress test runner. Okay. And now I will quickly initialize new Cypress bear project using my Bakhmut CLI utility. And let me just open Cypress right from VS Code terminal. And the base URL is when working with locally is 8080, 80, I think. Yes, I can use Electron. And let's look at the spec. We don't need this readme. And because this is a bare project, it skips all the support files and also all that. Okay, so it shows number of projects. And think about what would you do to write this test? Well, you know, visit the page, right? Confirm there should be at least 300 projects. We can also confirm with the number as the number of list items. So let's implement just these three steps now that we described it. I'm going to move it to the side. I'm going to open the test runner. Okay, so visiting the page is just visit the base URL. We can see it. Now we can select this count. Okay. And so this returns us um, this whole line of this element, right? So now we need to invoke its text and then parse number, I believe, or oh, just number. I always forget which one handles spaces, which one doesn't. And we can say should be above 300. Okay, so no, not yet. Parse number, parse int. Okay, well, you kind of guess how I'm programming all of my tests. Um, don't have to remember it exactly. I get instant feedback from the test runner just to see where I went wrong. Okay, so that's great. We confirm that more than 300. And then we know this number. And now we want to confirm that the number of items in the list is equal to that number n. Now, in my HTML, you can see the projects and the inside our li element. So we can get projects li should have length n. Okay, so we get the number of projects, then we get number of li elements, and that should be the same number of them. And now let's try searching using this element. So this element with a search text is right here. So it has an ID. We can find it using different ways, but we can get it and say type, let's say nice. Actually, let's say testing. So what happens then? Okay, so it did limit the number of projects and now it's only 32. Okay. So how do we confirm that the number displayed right here is below n? Because it should go down. 
So we use here above 300, but now it should be below n. So it goes down. Okay, so here's the problem. Cypress retries finding the element, it retries invoking the text, but when you use Cy then, then it stops retrying. So whatever initial number was 382, well, it will be 382. So in this case, we can use either Cypress map. Actually, let's use Cypress map. Why not? I'm gonna close Cypress and we'll install Cypress map plugin. Open Cypress back up. And to end testing, let's see our failing spec. And okay. So now we can import Cypress map commands. And instead of using then, we can use the following uh, map right here and right there. So it will map strings to parse uh, by calling parse. Why do I get this long array? Oh, it's split. Okay, never mind. It's not map. We only have a single value. So we need to apply par parse int. So map is when you have an array of elements like jQuery object on array of values. In this case, it's a single value and we just need to apply a function, but we want to retry if the assertion like here or there doesn't pass. Okay, so now we're correct. We waited until that element shows a number below 382. And we also want to confirm, right, new n. We want to confirm that the number of project is equal to that new number that's below 300. And now we confirm it. Okay, so this is how I would test my website that has filtering of projects by the search text. We get approximately the initial value, confirm that the number of items shown is that n, then we enter search text, and we confirm that the number changes below that initial number, and that the number of projects shown in the filtered list matches this new number.